All right, are we slapping, slapping, slapping? We're well, slapping. Slap another number on that baby. This is episode number 241. Yeah, I'm not really looking forward to this one. <laughs> Last one, yes, not this. And this so uh, I think we, we lost Heidi and uh, Turbo today, right? right? Fuck, yeah. Fucking peace and quiet. <laughs> listen to that, listen to that. That's yeah. the sound of the fucking road, nothing else. That's right. I like that. Yes, yeah, so we're, we're, we're on our way to a place called Round Rock. That's because in this area, all the rocks are triangular shaped and they're just not right. And we have not been here for a while. Chad, how long has it been? It's been a couple of years. It's been since before the, no wait, did we do anything after the pandemic nope. there? Yeah, I don't think so. It's been probably since 2019. Our friend Paul used to book the shows there, no longer with the company he left. And yeah. that was, I think it was the last time that we were there. Nice place, really nice grounds. It's right by a golf course or a country club or something like that. It's in Round Rock, so yeah. It's kind of like having a toilet in space, you know, at this point. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, uh, the, when, when we were there, I remember we I think we might have done the grand opening or... Yeah, yeah, it was brand new. Yeah, sure. it was brand new and the, the, the staff was uh, staff was really enthusiastic and well-versed in their knowledge of the club and proud of their club too, really. So uh, I'll, I'll be interested to see how it is. Yeah, no, we, we lost uh, Heidi yesterday. Oh, fucking dear, cheeky bastards. Uh, we lost Heidi to uh, Phoenix last night. We, uh, we said something offensive. I think Chad said something offensive on the mic about Phoenix and she said, fuck it, I'm going home. <laughs> We're going to have to apologize to her, but we'll see her in Ireland. I'm sure we'll be able to get her back for that. But I didn't mean what I said. Yeah, tell, yeah, tell her you're sorry. I'm sorry. That's not an apology. That's no, not. Take your shirt off and do it the Chad way. <laughs> now, we had a really fun time at a place called 12th Street Bar in yeah. Huntsville, Texas. That's great. Yeah, a nice stage. The club is not what you think. When you walk past it, you think it might be a might be the size of a very small shotgun pub in New Orleans or something like that. But it's great stage. Yeah. David ran an amazing sound. Um, Josh behind right, the yeah. bar. Yeah. Just killing it, Brad. It just new, newfound club for sure. So I think we're going to try to get in and do some Thursday nights in there so we can we can build it up. Yeah. But it definitely had that down home college station, O'Bannon's tap house kind of feel. Not, not I don't mean the pub. I just mean in general, great energy in the room, nice, you know, good visual. Yeah, uh, you know, you, you got places to sit, but you also got places to go and avoid the the direct onslaught of the sonic bliss that is blackguards and their backing tracks. Would you ever let that die, Chad? Can you can we just can we call that a day? Okay. No? Okay, good. <laughs> fuck music stands and fuck backing tracks. Really fun time there. And then uh, we, we did halfway to Patty's at O'Bannon's the night before. Yep. And fun, 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 fun. Oh my God. Just go to College Station just to go to Aggieland to see uh, Abandon's Tap House. Yeah. Chris Steele and his, like, you know, talk about a staff that knows their shit. Yeah. And Machine, two o'clock comes and they, man, yeah. they sit, the place is spotless. It's as clean as it was when you arrived at, you know, two o'clock in the afternoon. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. So, uh, big thanks to them. So, anyway, we're, we're, uh, we're discussing. Before the camera went on today, we were discussing songs and how we kill songs and shine lights on songs. Chad's struggling to find one here because we've been <laughs> we've been killing a lot of songs lately. Again, yeah. for, for the for the you know if you're new to Slobber Dogs, we welcome you. But we want you to know that when we kill a song, it's just most likely a song that we've heard too much or a song you know never attacking anybody's artistic. Yeah, well, maybe Hotel California, maybe. No, okay. some of them definitely we despise. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And and again, yeah. it's just a matter of taste, and it's you know it's all done in good fun. Yeah. And uh, I'm sure if people were going to kill our stuff, it would be Drunken Sailor number one. And what would you what would you say are the people's choice would be to kill? That they're sick of. Yeah. No, just 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 songs we do in general. That was actually the first song I killed was Ball and Chain, which we still cover occasionally. I, uh, probably you know, whiskey in the no, maybe, yeah. maybe whiskey in the jar or maybe Wild River or something like that or uh, yeah definitely. yeah Wild River is a good lot of good it reminds me of another subject and I'll ask you this first because I I already have my answer and what's a song that completely splits the room some people love it and most people hate it or you know a, a lot of people love it a lot of people hate it I um, I, I know the, I, there's a cover that we did that falls into that category what's the first one that comes to mind for you oh probably Sweet Caroline or something like that that's a that's a good one but that's not what I. I, I think that people even hate it, 
tolerate it because the crowd gets so into it. I, I, I'm not one, but mine is that we, we did a cover of Dead or Alive, Spin Me Round. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, and a lot of people loved it. I remember the first time we did it, a lot of people loved it, but most people hated it. And it was pretty funny because we usually don't care. <laughs> if, if we do it and they don't like it, we're going to do it anyway. Like yeah. Ball and Chain, I don't like the song. The story was we we we've um, spoken of this on a previous Slapper cast. The <clears throat> we're talking previously on a on an episode of Slapper cast. I want to say it was number one one twenty three episode one twenty three definitely. Just kidding. I spoke of how somebody had told me about the song and kind of hummed a little bit of it, and we played it, and I never heard the song. I never heard the original. And when I heard the original, I was like, oh, we got pretty fucking close. So oh, I see. it was it was one of those moments where um, I think the same thing that happened happened with uh, Spin. We did the we did we did our version of it, then I went back and listened to it. And I think that electronic keyboard bass line is magnificent in that song. I just think it's truly the original? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I absolutely love it. And uh, we, but we did the orgy. Orgy did, covered it, and then we covered Orgy's version of that song. And it wasn't. It definitely wasn't high on our list to do. But it was back in the day when you when. Uh, this is another thing you have to keep in mind too. When we kill a song, we're completely aware of this. When you kill a song, we kill a song. It's because we've heard it too many times, or blah blah blah, on and on and on. You have to remember too. The, the band that wrote that song wrote it because their audience wanted it. And their audience still most likely loves it. So it's not a it's not a case of people trying to write shit to have shit. But back in the day, we had a crowd that was back in the uh, in those days. The crowds that we were playing to were still very, and we still run across it today. Are still very, very, very unaware with Irish rock the way that we do Irish rock. We do Irish rock in the vein of Thin Lizzy, Iron Maiden, Black Sabbath, but also trying to stay as true as we can to the Wolf Tones, Clancy Brothers, you know, Horse Lips, if, you know, all, all possible, you know, but we, we we try to keep those songs honest to how we would like to hear them. Sure. So, so there are many songs that we do, and I'd love to know, I would love to know in this uh, Slapper Cast episode 241, I would love to know what song you would love to kill of ours. I'd love it. Keeping in mind, too, uh, Wagon Wheel is on our record. It's the least song that we play. So that's, a, that's a good one to kill. Uh, second Worst Girlfriend, because it's most likely about you or your grandmother. And uh, what's the other one? Wild Rover. Anyway, the, the, lots to choose from. Lots to choose from. But I'd love to hear from you. What Blackguard song would you like to kill? And we'll announce it on the next, on that, on uh, 242. Do you, you know where I first heard you play Spin Me Around? No, I do not. One of those early gigs you played with uh, Russell. Oh. Russell, it was early for me. I mean, I yes. just coming in. Russell and, and Tom and Chuggy at uh, Stagshead. Stagshead Pub. Wow, what a memory. And uh, Check out the that big was, brain of Brian. It was, I think it was at that show that I first, I don't know if I actually met them, but I remember that Kat and Chris O'Banion were there, here from ICP. And I remember when you, when y'all kicked into that song, they started just cracking up. <laughs> Mission accomplished. Turning to me and going, yeah, yeah. this guy, this oh, is so cool. Well, now I'm glad you said that because now I know why that song came to be a part of the set list. Russell Pryor. Russell Pryor, great drummer, good friend of ours. He lives in, I won't tell you where he lives because I don't want you guys going there and knocking on his door because he'll let you in and he'll probably cook for you. Rub your belly, brush your hair, all that stuff. Now, great, great, great friend, great person. Uh, but Russell Pryor Jr. suggested that we do that song. He also suggested, which I haven't played in a hundred million years. Some of you might thank, thank me for that. But it's uh, the, the breakup song. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, and he had suggested, uh, 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 yeah, and he had suggested that song. And that song, I really enjoyed playing that. You gotta have, you gotta have a little bit of soul to play that song. It, 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 it kind of reminds me of. Jesse's girl with a stutter. Yeah. You know, that it's got that. Uh, but very cars like, very uh very, very that new wave stuff, but but clever. Was that Great Kim? No. Great Kim, yeah. It was, okay. Yes, it was. Yeah. 
And for the longest time, I didn't know who did that. That was funny because I didn't have, we didn't have internet back then, kids. We couldn't just talk into your phone and say, what is this shit? Yeah. And it goes, it's the shit you're listening to. Yeah, very, very strange. We, we were passing around cassette tapes, which 99.2% of the drummers didn't listen to. And uh, neither did the rest of the band. But you, you give them tapes, like, oh, yeah, I want to play with you. Here, here's a tape. Yeah. Go listen to it, learn it. Okay. Then you get to the show and they go, uh, how's that one go? I said, it's the first song. Count it in. Uh, one, two, three. No. So, one, two, three, two, two, three. Anyway. I always thought, uh, you got a song, uh, Lunatic French. Lunatic French, I know you're out there. You know what? No. I always thought that was a great, great, great Ken song, but it's actually by Red Rider. It's one of those things that you're saying, saying like, we don't, we, we never knew who, who did what back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, that was funny because we couldn't have just looked it up as easy as that. And, uh, you know, Russell would, uh, the, 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 the three songs that he suggested that we do were definitely Spin Me Round, the breakup song, Red Ken, and the other one was, uh, which we never performed. I know I learned it. Mexican Radio. Oh yeah, and uh, he uh, he had suggested that. I kind of looked at him funny. I was like, oh, "A, what are you talking about? B, why?" But he was right. What was the name of that band? It's um, uh, something video. It's on the top line. Stan Stan Bridgeway. Guys, maybe we'll look it up on our computer later. Yeah, we're we're in the future now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Let's do a couple. And did uh, the Rumblefish soundtrack with that guy. So. Um, well, yeah. Speaking of that, so do you want to kill any songs? I do, but I don't. Know what All right, the well, fuck I'll, you I'll kill. start. I'll start, and I'll help you out. All right. This is the low hanging fruit edition. The uh, I know, I know, we probably killed Right Said Fred. Uh, you know, two sexy. Yeah, I know so we probably we killed that one. But the other one was the the Je suis un rock star. That uh, yeah, back in the day, there was a pop pop song. Um, and it was, it was it was quite crap. It was it was a uh, it was thorough crap. Another one of those songs to where I imagine somebody's in a studio with a DX7 keyboard and they hit some patch and they go, oh, and they just kind of talk over it and then they go, fuck it, release it. That song, and I'm also gonna, I'm also gonna uh, uh, kill, which I hate to do it because, you know, Philo is part of my heart. Philo from Thin Lizzy, big, big, big part of my heart. Yeah. But he and uh, Midge Ewer wrote. Yellow Pearl. Uh, I don't know if they intended it to be the Top of the Pops soundtrack, but it was the Top of the Pops. That was a, a, a music show back in uh, in Europe, back in the day. And the, the the pinnacle of your success, the very, very, you know, the, the absolute best you could do was to be number one on Top of the Pops and to play it. And then they used to mime. Iron Maiden famously would not mime. And, and I think one time they did it, they, they all swapped instruments. You should look it up on the, the tubes of you. Yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, it ended up, the, the, the song, The Yellow Pearl, ended up being the theme for Top of Pops. And it was just, it, to me, it was, I, I thought the melody was kind of cool, but it, it was just, it was very, if you know Phil and you know Thin Lizzy and you know his his solo work and his uh, collaborations and stuff, uh, it, just, it just wasn't. It wasn't up to snuff. Yeah, not, not even close. But just a very very watery piece and and, and, yeah. and again it's all 80s so it has that you know that that trash can sounding snare and yeah the, everything's kind of thin and it's a right. but I understand what he was doing um a song that I I'll I'll, I'll uh, shine a light on is another one of Phil's solo works it was right after Thin Lizzy had split and he was I uh, want to believe he was in the middle of forming Grand Slam which was very very minute uh, space and time that they had occupied um uh, Lawrence Archer, uh, Brendan on drums. Uh, I saw them at the SFX. I saw, uh, I saw them at a co- in a concert in Dublin, and it was just you, the, the lads were trying. They were trying their best, but it was one of those things where they just after coming off Ben Lizzy, it's impossible to. The, the, the best analogy I have is if, if if somebody gives you cocaine and the next day they give you Coca Cola, you're not gonna like the second one as much you know and it was just it was it was just that big a difference to me being a Lizzie fan yeah, yeah. but I, I I appreciated what they were trying to do but it, it was just that it was that moment in time where, where where there was nothing he could have done to elevate 
their game to, to, to even touch what Thin Lizzy had created. And again, you're asking a band of essentially unknowns to, to, to jump in and fill the shoes of Brian Downey, Scott Gorham, John Sykes, um, Darren Wharton, you know. So, yeah. anyway, that's a long way to go. Sorry about that, kids. But that's uh, that's my kill song, shine song. All right. What you got? <laughs> All right. Hey, do you want a hand? Damn it. I, I'm going to tell you that uh, yeah. one of one of my one of my uh, one of my guilty pleasures is that old Barry Manilow. But I bet you there's a Barry Manilow song that you'd like to kill. I don't really. Don't know. I mean, I I just know his hits. I'm trying to think what. I, I, I love I love Mandy. I think that's a great song. Yeah, and I, I love uh, um, I love Coco Cabana. I love people hate that song, but God, I, I, that song for me that's just something about that. Uh, I used to drive you guys nuts with uh, I forget what lineup it was, but we'd be leaving Austin, we'd be leaving Fado on a on a night four o'clock in the fucking morning. We're driving home, and I'm just singing on a loop. I'm singing Coco Cabana. Oh, uh, uh, here, okay, here's another artist that that you'll. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Now, I should say, they're, they're, they're Barry, Barry had another huge hit, but I can't remember what it was. Now, oh, that's not, it was like one of the self, the self referential songs where he was talking about the song he was singing as he was singing it. Oh, I write the songs? Yes. That's a good one. <laughs> I don't know. I, I, I don't feel it's like silly to kill these songs that nobody listens to anymore. I, I write the songs and I don't know what I'm saying. Yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was pretty, pretty awful at the time. <laughs> Yeah. Special things. I like how he gets a, I write the songs that make the young girls cry. And then he just runs out of ideas. I write the songs, I write the songs. See, good like, job. I don't know, I'll just repeat a line. I have no idea what else to sing here. I write the songs, I write the songs. Again, you think he might have been sitting at the at the grand piano and and just, oh, okay, I'll use that. Was, yeah. Yeah. It was what I was saying, he just copied and pasted that line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll just figure it out. I don't think they had copy or paste back in those days. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a standard feature in a pencil. Yeah, panty and waist, but not yeah. copy. Anyway, yeah. what's your uh, what's your shadow light? Ah, oh, damn it, squeeze, squeeze. Oh. I think you already started showing a light on Piccadilly. That's one of their lesser known, really yeah. great songs. Okay, let, let me ask you this real quick. We'll come back to shadow light. But if you had to kill a squeeze song, what would it be? Probably one of their crappy experimental ones. Like I try to think. Oh, there's no tomorrow. That that's one of their. This is not an overplayed kill. This is a kill that's on a song or an album of otherwise like amazing songs. And then you get to this one, and it's just this dreary. There's no tomorrow. This, this weird dissonant psychedelic thing they're trying to do, and it, it is in no way indicative of the kind of brilliant work that uh, that Tifford and, and uh, Tilburg were doing at the time. Uh, that would that would definitely be the song I'd kill because I've always it's one of those ones I'm always skipping past I'm like god damn it shut up <laughs> get back to doing the good shit so and I'm all for experimental stuff we were, we were talking about Duran Duran in the last episode but even even Duran Duran's weirder songs were still really really danceable and catchy because that's what they did so I, 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 that, that's with, with Squeeze that, that just made no sense to me because they, they just went off in this completely weird unlistenable tangent uh, they did it a couple times on some of the records uh, most of their most of their albums are, are not really they're, they're a great singles band and I think that's one of, one of the reasons why I mean, probably their best selling record is that what are those compilations you know the best of or the singles collection whatever it is because if you listen to one of just, just an album eventually you're going to hit one or two songs that are just kind of weird filler yeah. that's the only one of the only things about that band that frustrates me <laughs> so they don't really have one album that I can listen to all the way through yeah, um, hey, the, 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 the kill, uh, the, 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 sh- the song I love by them is was quite popular, I mean, is quite popular, it, it, is that love, love that fucking song. I cannot get tired of that song. I don't want to get tired of that song. So you're um, going to kill it? <laughs> no, no, I like that one. But is that love, it, it, if I had the ability to sit down and craft a single, that's what it would sound like. Yeah. It's just so, so good, good lyrics. Great guitar playing and great, just just a driving song. Really, yeah. We used to go, you were doing that solo acoustic when I first met you, and then we, we did it as a duo. I know you don't remember this, we talked about it before, but I distinctly I know that we did because I, I remember, no, it's him this time. 
Someday I'm going to find a recording evidence of this <laughs> to prove you and then, wrong. And then Chad Smalley's going to wind up in a ditch. <laughs> so uh, I'm shocked that you don't remember that. I really, yeah, I don't. I don't. It's funny. It was that one, and of course, uh, what's the other one? Up the Junction. Up the Junction, yes. Great song. I did attempt solo. I did attempt to do uh, Black Coffee in Bed early on. Great song. Which is that I remember having a difficult time singing that. It was pretty high. So are you. <laughs> <laughs> we, we saw Emily, Emily in Huntsville. Emily and her sister and her brother in law. I forgot about that. That's right. Yeah. That was cool. That was, that was so nice to see them. Uh, there was a mix up on the, on the time. People at uh, the club had said seven, but they wanted us to start at eight thirty. So, whoops! Somebody was drinking. And then, uh, so next week we're off. We we've got some uh, business to attend to. Yeah. And then we're in the uh, we're in the merry month of October, boys and girls. Yeah. We're we're, we're back to uh, we're back to the month of Ireland. We're back yep. to. Uh, um, so I now I, as as it sits right now, we are playing on Pocon in uh, Galway. The second night, we're doing uh, hopefully a little acoustic thing in, in uh, Killarney. We're doing the Old Oak and Cork. There's still a couple other shows that we're trying to pull together, right? Yeah. If at all possible. There might be a second one in Cork. Yeah. Possibly. So. Yeah. It's a... Uh, Ireland is a... Uh, such a beautiful country and great people and all the rest, but let me tell you something. My music there, if you're in a rock and roll band and you live in Ireland, my hat's off to you. My hat's not off to you right now, but in general, my hat's off to you. Uh, that's a difficult scene. Maybe one slapper cast will, will designate a whole episode to booking shows in Ireland and what kind of drugs you're gonna need and on and on and on and on and on. Man, ouch. So, lots to look forward to there. So uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna uh, cut this off too, and then we're gonna we're gonna pick this up tonight on the way home. I'm gonna take the night off. I've uh, I've strained my uh, my vocal cords, so the next half of this is gonna be top fucking drawer. So ladies, strap in, strap on. Here they come. All right. See ya.